Hey guys, it's Sun for Games, and as you may or may not be aware, the Nintendo Switch launched last week, last Friday. I'm gonna come right out and say this from the very beginning. Uh, this is a very tough launch for me to rate. I'm all over the place with my impressions of this thing. There are like eight or so games available at launch. Uh, some are existing games ported to the Switch, others are just not really worth it. And then of course, there's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because Zelda and the Switch are so intertwined, I'll probably mention it a bit as I discuss uh, the pros and cons of the new console, but I'll have a separate video next week going over my thoughts over all of the first 10 to 15 hours. I don't even know how much I've played so far. If I'm up to like 20, I feel stupid, but whatever. How many hours I've played of Zelda, I'll, that'll be coming next week. For now, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of the new Nintendo Switch. This is a standard Switch unit from Target of all places. Not a review copy or anything. I'm not being endorsed or promoted by Nintendo in any way to do my impressions. Um, they don't give a shit about me. I, these are just my real world got it as a birthday present, uh, thoughts. Seriously, it was a gift. All right, so initial disclaimer, though. I, I got this thing on Friday when it launched. I've only had it a few days. Also, I've only played a single game on it, Zelda, so I haven't gotten to experience certain aspects of the console that will heavily impact uh, my long-term feelings on it. Stuff like downloading a game, uh, how digital content works in general, how fast can I switch between games, ha, switch. Just throwing out there that this is a collection of my first impressions, and all of this will likely change as updates come out, new games come out, all sorts of stuff for the Switch over the next few months, year, whatever. As usual, I'll try to remember to link everything uh, that I mentioned in the video in the description below if you're looking for it, but let's just get right into this stuff because I'm really excited to talk about the Nintendo Switch. So let's talk about the most obvious thing, the look and feel of the uh, device. Now, no matter how much I prepare myself for the small size of this device, reminding myself time and time again that photos are super zoomed in and it's gonna be about the width of the Wii U console from like the front side, I was still surprised when I took it out of the box. It's about two or three times uh, as like thick as like a tablet, like a high-end tablet that you expect, like an iPad or a Samsung Droid or whatever. But unlike those tablets, it's not really meant to be held like this, like just a little tablet screen. With the Joy-Cons on to each side, it actually feels like a great side to just hold and play games. However, the one time I did just set it down on the desk with its kickstand and like try to like sit back and play, it was way too small. I, I felt myself leaning over and like kind of hunched and like trying to get as close as I could to the screen. I just didn't think that was like a very enjoyable way to play. Now, if you're on like a plane, that might be a different story, but I think this configuration is probably how I mostly play in like a portable fashion. Weight-wise, it feels fine. Uh, I've played it for long enough sessions that I feel like the weight would start to bother me if it was gonna bother me at all, and it really doesn't. I feel totally comfortable saying it's a great weight for a handheld device, uh, which is surprising considering it's like a full console. Any lighter, and it would probably feel a little weird, like too chintzy and like likely to break. Sliding the Joy-Cons on and off isn't quite as easy as the commercials would like you to think, but maybe I just suck at it. <laughs> sort of have to press this little button on the top of the back as you like slide it up, and I'm always worried about like dropping the, the center console, so I'm kind of like grabbing both. Maybe it's just because I'm stressed about dropping the Switch. If I wasn't so stressed about it, it'd probably be a lot easier. Regardless, it's not too hard. And honestly, it has been pretty cool moving from the handheld to the TV using the same basic controllers in your hand. You don't have to figure out new button configurations and layouts and even just distances between like the thumbstick and the buttons. It's, it's nice. But we'll get more into the controllers in a minute. <laughs> So how about the screen? I, Nintendo's created some pretty memorable pieces of hardware over the years, but I don't think I'd ever have chosen the word premium to describe them. Maybe sturdy. So I had concerns that the Switch would feel a lot closer to the Wii U controller than, than like a high-end tablet with a crappy like etch-a-sketch quality screen that kind of seems to flabby and like bend like it's made of plastic. But I was like pleasantly surprised. The screen certainly looks like a high quality screen with some great contrast and some really awesome bright colors. I haven't gotten to try it outside yet in the bright sun because it's like 25 degrees out, but chances are I'm not going to want to play in the direct sun anyway. I'm going to be in the shade. I don't want to use like an expensive console like out in the sun where it's getting all hot, but that's just me. The screen brightness does seem to be pretty high, but again, that's kind of like inside where everything seems bright. The screen's got a resolution of 720p, which I know is a big downer for some hoping for a higher resolution on the new console, but I think it looks great for the size and I've really enjoyed playing Zelda in bed or on the couch with it. I was never like playing it wishing that I was playing on my TV when I was holding the console. Like it looks great. 1080p would have been cool, but honestly, I'm not surprised to see 720p on this console. I always kind of expected that to be the target resolution. But honestly, the best thing I can think to say about it is that it looks like a 2017 device. It doesn't look as sleek as a high-end Samsung or Apple tablet, but I don't look at it and say, what about you is $300? It feels like a premium Nintendo piece of hardware, which are words that don't normally go together. But I seriously do want to like show it off when people come over. I'm like, look at this new cool thing I have. When I got the Wii or the Wii U, I was like, look at this, you know, neat concept. I'm going to hide it like over here, like in, in the cupboard. They just kind of looked crappy. It was more about the experience. You weren't like, look at this cool thing. 
the little Joy-Con controllers feel fine when attached to the Switch itself or when like slid into the little attachable controller thing that came with it. The shoulder buttons could probably stand to be a little bigger. Like look at the L and R buttons, they are pretty tiny. I ran into that occasionally when using the L or R functions as Delta and I accidentally like hit the button behind it, but I haven't really struggled with any of the other buttons or the joysticks on the Joy-Cons. Considering all the reviews going around, people saying like, I don't know, like it seems pretty tiny, like I, it feels good. Having said that, it is definitely the smallest form factor of any modern controller I've like ever seen. And if you have really big hands, it might be a problem for you. I also haven't tried to use just a single Joy-Con controller for anything because I don't have a game that I could like utilize that with, but it might be tough. Sliding the console into the dock is super easy, although I do worry each time I do it that I'm like scratching the screen as I drop it in. Sliding out is just as easy, and it is honestly awesome to change between handheld and console mode so smoothly without any interruption. Whether it delivers on the other selling points or not, it does do that and it does it very well. I really hope that this kind of experience spreads to the other consoles and especially to PC streaming as well because I love it. I'll go back to that in a minute, but having said that, Zelda does kind of experience some rather jarring frame rate issues when in console mode. It has some serious like frame rate drops in seemingly random situations. Not sure if that's patchable or just the game being the game, but it's fairly noticeable if you've been playing a while on the handheld mode, which is super smooth, I think at a lower resolution. And then you switch to the big screen and you'll like turn the camera and suddenly it's like, Bleh. That was the frame rate dropping suddenly. Bleh. It bothers me because I'm like super attentive to that kind of stuff, but the game is so fun I really can look past it which seems like a perfect segue into the console experience itself. Again, changing between modes is, is just fantastic. Software-wise, hardware-wise, whatever. There's really nothing to talk about, it just does it. Good job, Nintendo. If you'd screwed that up, it would have been a failure of immense proportions with all this, the amazing commercials that are like, tsh, in, tsh, out. Now the developers will have to decide whether or not the hardware can handle a big boost in resolution when you put it in dock mode because it's the same hardware either way. And this might be where Zelda is having some difficulties. So I'm curious to see how other games handle it. But I'm so jealous of this experience now with my other consoles and my PC. Cause like if you have ever been playing a game, like Final Fantasy XIV just playing a game and then you go to stream that game, it doesn't work. You can't just like latch onto that already existing streaming service. You gotta restart the game, you gotta shut it down, go upstairs, restart, and it's just, it's just annoying. I'd like to be able to just be like, kick off the stream, and it's like, I'm now playing on something else. Like, come on guys, we can do this. Anyways, moving on. As for the UI and software in general, uh, I mean, it, it's fine, I guess. <laughs> Day one, there really isn't too much to see. I've got my game, I've got some settings, an eShop with like five or so games on it, they're all overpriced. I mean, this is Nintendo. This is where things are gonna be fleshed out in months to come, and, and that's not unusual. PS4 and Xbox One also released with uh, features left out and have since, you know, continued to update and improve upon that software. Although I don't know if transferring saved games was on the list of things that weren't included day one. This is a big thing, Nintendo, we gotta work on that. But again, more on that in a little bit. The interface is snappy and going to check to make sure that it's outputting in 1080p and that you've connected to the right Wi-Fi was, was quick and easy, which I know that sounds dumb, but honestly, previous Nintendo consoles, that's been like a chore. I'm like, ah, I gotta go through all these menus. Each one is like, chugging along. It's not a 10 minute endeavor anymore. It's just quick, done. You check the menu, you're good. I will say that setting up my digital account and linking it to my previous digital accounts and making sure that in fact was the correct digital account that I was linking to in the Nintendo store and not just like some random account I made moments ago wasn't the easiest process. I kind of got the impression that as I was doing this, I like fabricated a new Nintendo ID and linked it to a new Switch ID that I was also creating at the same time. Regardless, I'm up and running, but I'm not sure if my previous content is linked or not. I, I'm, I'm really confused. There wasn't a ton of it, so I'm not like stressed, but I don't know if it worked. I didn't really remember my account from the previous thing, but I tried like all my email addresses and it was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I tried to log in Nintendo ID and it's like, okay, sure, you've made one. I'm like, wait, made? Moving on, that could be my problem and not everybody else's problem, but I'm sure some people are gonna experience some of the difficulties I experienced to make sure your accounts are linked and what accounts you had, do you even have an account? Whatever. Having said that, I will take this time to now bring up some of the concerns that various users have reported on the internet, stuff that I'm very interested in as a new owner of the Nintendo Switch. So like I mentioned before, currently there's no way to transfer saved games off the Nintendo Switch. They're all stored on the Nintendo Switch. Can't move it to an SD card, can't move it to like a cloud saving device. This means if it breaks or you buy a new one or you decide to bring a game to somebody else's house and you don't bring your Switch, you don't have those save games. First, I'll say this isn't a huge deal, at least for me. I mean, in like six months, it could be a big deal. Right now, it's not really a big problem. Like, it doesn't affect me at all. <laughs> I'm like super positive that Nintendo will patch in functionality to transfer saves at some point. I'm sure it wasn't 
mission critical for launch. Having said that, if, if they don't, that could prove to be a pretty big problem for Nintendo. In 2017, data backups should be a necessity on anything that can store data at all. But again, I'm not stressed about it right now. I can see people's concerns and I'm hoping it gets patched in, but uh, I, I'm pretty confident that it'll be something that'll be added at a later date. On top of that, as I'm sure you've heard, uh, there have been a ton of complaints about the signal quality from the left Joy-Con specifically. Whether or not these reports are widespread remains to be seen. It's kind of hard to tell. I have not specifically experienced it, but however, in a couple weeks, if it's determined that this is a fairly common issue amongst you know people that have bought the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo better step up their game and communication in response to these kind of problems. If I bought a new PS4 and the controllers like left side were <laughs> like tried to move the left stick and it just didn't work, I'd expect a new controller and like quickly. Maybe to be paid for services rendered and, you know, emotional damages. It's been much. Again, I haven't seen this issue myself, but enough people have reported to make me wonder if it's a pretty widespread thing. We shall see. Speaking of controllers, uh, there are a lot of peripherals to talk about here, many of which I don't own yet because it's, uh, it's really popular to buy a lot of the peripherals and they're kind of out of stock everywhere. The Joy-Con dock that's included with the Nintendo Switch is essentially just a comfortable piece of plastic that holds your Joy-Cons. Uh, it doesn't charge the Joy-Con attachments when they're docked to it. They seem to hold the charge pretty well as far as I can tell so far, but I really haven't like tested their limits by like leaving them off the, the switch overnight and like seeing what's going on the next day. But there's another version of this though that charges the Joy-Cons while they're attached and it seems pretty popular. Although I'm assuming you've got to then charge that sometime, so it still seems like you're charging something no matter what. My Switch Pro controller is coming tomorrow at the time of this filming. Everything I've heard suggests it's one of the best Nintendo controllers ever made, and in fact it's one of the best controllers, you know, out there right now. Which it better be, because it's 70 bucks. Problem number one, although not new to Nintendo fans, all the peripherals seem to be ridiculously expensive. Two new Joy-Cons are $80. $80! That's a lot, Nintendo. $80 is a lot. This is 40 bucks in my hand right now. Why? Why was that my first go-to? Why is everybody putting Nintendo stuff in their mouths? I won't eat this cartridge, I'm not gonna do it. The PS4 and Xbox One controllers are like 40 to 50 bucks, I think, in general, so 70 bucks seems a little steep, but I bought it. I had a gift card, so it would help, but everyone just says it's so awesome, but yeah, 70 bucks is a lot. I'm still looking for a good case for the Nintendo Switch so I can like take it around places, but I mean, God, everything is back ordered. Let me know in the comments if you found a really good one that's available, because I'll probably check it out. Anyway, sorry that's not exactly related to the Switch itself, but I, it's a portable console with a multiplayer focus, so I feel like additional controllers, other peripherals for like travel and other stuff, is all kind of important stuff to think about when you're looking at the Nintendo Switch. Look, the Switch has been very excited for this generation of Nintendo games. The hardware is clearly capable of pushing some beautiful games, like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is just amazing. But I am also curious to see a more conventional graphic style. Zelda, while beautiful, is a very unique art style that lends itself well to kind of lower horsepower graphical systems. I'd love to see like Battlefield or Final Fantasy XIV on this thing. Speaking of which, <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV, uh, the developers did kind of say they would like to look into porting it to the Nintendo Switch. It would be pretty cool to have like an MMO on the go. Ugh, did I just say that? But the biggest thing holding Nintendo Switch back right now is games. You knew it was coming, games. I mean, it should come as a surprise to basically nobody that there's only a few games right now that are available for the Nintendo Switch, and almost all of them are available, including Zelda, on other platforms. This will continue to change as the months go on, but ultimately, if you don't absolutely need to have the newest thing, like I do, and can wait on Zelda or play it on the Wii U and already have Bomberman and Shovel Knight or I Am Setsuna, you probably don't need to pick this up right away. I'm sure there will be some bundles and sales all the way by Black Friday, right in time for the next Super Mario game which is coming out, which looks awesome. It's a really cool console, I'm really excited to see what, what is to come, but there's still a lot of work to do on the library of games and, and possibly some hardware fixes. Having said that, I've barely been able to put it down since I got it, so it's not like it's a bad purchase. And if you don't have a lot of the games that are on the Nintendo Switch's library, I think this is a fun console to play a lot of those throughout the house, in, you know, wherever you go. It's a really cool portable console. This is where I get confused, is because it's hard to recommend it to somebody else, but I've loved it. So if you're kind of like me, I'm sure you'll love it. Do you need it now? Probably not. Will you need it next year? Maybe. Anyways, let me know in the comments uh, your thoughts on the Switch, its library, and some of the controversy surrounding some of the issues people are reporting about it. Am I missing a must-own game like with uh, I Am Setsuna? Does anyone have that game? I actually haven't played it. There's also like an F-Zero style racer that looks kind of cool, but it's like 20 bucks, so I can't decide if that's like worth picking up or not. Uh, or anything else. I actually have not played Bomberman or Shovel Knight. I know people love Shovel Knight. It just kind of looks a little too classic for me. What release are you most excited about though? Mario Kart is coming out at the end of April, but that sounds like it's Mario Kart 8 from the Wii U again. 
If you didn't have a Wii U and you do have a Switch though, I totally recommend it. Mario Kart 8 was awesome. So I probably won't pick it up, but it is a great game. Obviously beyond that, we've got plenty of other releases that I'm super pumped about. So uh, anyways, again, let me know in the comments all your thoughts and uh, thanks for sticking around. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should totally think about subscribing. I've got videos coming out twice a week, and if you like this one, there's at least a chance you'll like some of the others that are very similar to this, so live dangerously. Let me know what you guys thought about the video in the comments and other videos you'd like to see. And finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Hunting for Games to keep up with all the latest stuff. See ya.